What a week. What a crazy week. If we try to summarize it a bit, we had Jerome Powell saying close the effing door. We got Moody's on Friday downgraded the US to negative from stable. We had Elon Musk releasing Grok. We had oil prices dropping. We had Bitcoin skyrocketing to 37. We had Microsoft hitting an all-time high while Lucid hitting an all-time low and more and more and more. All these things we're going to talk about the weekly summary where we summarize not only the results, but also the headlines. So are you ready for it? Let's go. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new, thank you for joining. And if you're a repeat viewer, thank you very much for your loyalty. I'm Micah Stocks, where we have the channel called Stock Talk with Micah Stocks, talking about the markets, talking about stocks, talking about news headlines and everything you need to know of what happened in the week and getting ready for the week ahead. And by that, I just a quick reminder, everything and anything that you see here is not financial advice, it's only for education and entertainment purposes only. Let's dive in. What a week. Nasdaq up 2.85, S&P up 1.3, Dow Jones up more than half of a percent. Only the Russell, the Russell 2000, the smaller companies that are more reliant on lower rates is down 3% for the week. This brings us to the, to the sectors themselves, XLK, XLC, very much on the green. By the way, these are communications and technology. If you invested in them or you were heavily invested or in them, you would be up 42 and 44% beginning of the year. On the flip side, you have energy down 3% and utilities down 2.4%. Year to date, energy is down 4%, and XLU, which is utilities, down 14.4%. This is how the sectors themselves look during the week. You can see the XLK skyrocketing on Friday due to a very, very strong Friday close. When we look at the crypto market, everyone is waiting for the approval of the ETF. Bitcoin is up 5.7%. Ethereum is up 7.9% because maybe Ethereum ETF will be approved before the Bitcoin one. And in the fight between Bitcoin and gold, not even talking about bonds, but Bitcoin and gold, Bitcoin year to date is up 123%. So if you're a Bitcoin bull, you're super happy. If you're a gold bull, and uh, Bitcoin bear, you're probably less happy. These are the Magnificent Seven pulling the market, and we're going to uh, emphasize that during the end of the video. NVIDIA up 7.4%. Apple is up. Microsoft is up. New 52-week high and actually new all-time high. Meta, Amazon, Google, and only Tesla is behind, down 2.4%. Oil, we talked about the rise and the fall since September. 28th of September, where oil reached $94 a barrel, went down this week to 74.9, a bit up on Friday to 77, but if you summarize it, 18% down from the peak, it means that it will impact CPI for the better, meaning that prices are going down. And this is the heat map for the S&P 500. You can see on the left-hand side, the mega caps, the Magnificent Seven, and others rising and rising and rising. And on the right-hand side, you can see the smaller companies, whether it's healthcare or others, which are red, red, red. But something very interesting to compare, if you compare the S&P, which is the white, white line here, year to date, up 15.4%. If you compare it to the RSP, which is the 500 bigger, biggest companies, but divided equally, it is down less than a percent year to date. Meaning, if you bought the S&P from the beginning of the year, you're up 15%. If you just looked at the market as equal weighted, it's you didn't have any gain. The reason for that is, again, the Magnificent Seven. They're pulling the market ahead. This brings us to the weekly news. Are you ready to hear everything that happened this week or the highlights of things that happened this week. Let's dive in. Here we go. Friday, after the close, Moody's cuts U.S. outlook to negative, citing higher interest rates. Reasons, downside risk for U.S. fiscal strength because government keeps spending. Fiscal deficit remains very high. 
are very large. If it's large and there's higher rate, it means that the U.S. is paying a lot more to service that debt. And to add all that, political pressures between Democrats and Republicans impact the downgrade in ratings. And uh, we will see on Monday how the market interprets that. The video that everyone is forwarding, Jerome Powell, the most dominant uh, economic figure in the world, financial figure in the world, was interrupted during an IMF conference by um, environmentalists that um, stopped his uh, speech. And the camera goes down, but you can hear him say thank you for them, thank you, thank you, and eventually saying close the effing door, meaning just close the door so they won't be able to enter. It didn't impact the market, if that's your question. Meta, on the other hand, strikes a deal to return to China after 14 years. It's not going to be Meta directly, it's going to be through Tencent. They're going to uh, market the Metaverse goggles. But it's a step forward for Meta going back to China. Also, Meta lets Amazon shoppers buy products on Facebook and Instagram without leaving the app. Why is that important? Because it means that they're staying more time on the app and not going out to Amazon and then saying, what did I do? And going to X afterwards. So that is why they're doing that. Billionaire investor Ron Barron sat on CNBC at a conference on Friday for his, uh, his customers and uh, he kind of mentioned that Tesla in a year and a half is going to launch the 25,000 smaller car. And by launch, it's going to be launched in China. We know in Berlin and in Austin, you can put... And he also mentioned that they're going to produce around 5 million. You can do the math, 5 million cars, 25,000 apiece. That's a lot of money and a lot of earnings for Tesla. Microsoft had something strange on Friday. There was a, a company-wide email saying, stop using ChatGPT because of a security concern. A few minutes later, that was overcome and said, no, no, you can keep on using it. Uh, why is that strange? Mainly because Microsoft is investing in OpenAI. OpenAI this week had a conference. We're going to talk about that later. Satya Nadal, the person you're seeing here, was on stage with Sam Altman. Very, very strange. It didn't stop Microsoft from hitting all-time high, by the way. Lizanne Sanders from Charles Schwab identifying that the U.S. consumer debt climbs to $17.3 trillion. That's, a, that's cra a crazy, crazy, crazy number. And BlackRock, just like others, waiting to get their ETFs, the crypto ETFs approved. Of course, pumping the market through that. GM Cruz uh, slashing their contractors. Apparently, for every autonomous car that they had through the cruise service, they had people behind the scene navigating the car. Every four to five miles, there was an intervention. And if that's the case, then the cruise model is just not working. And maybe FSD as a whole is not working. We will wait to, he to see the, thir the version 13 out of Tesla based all on neural nets to see if there's still hope in autonomous driving. US 30 this week had an auction that didn't go well. It didn't go well. No one wanted to buy from one to the other the mortgages and the loans for 30 years because right now uh, risk duration is focused on the short term rather than the long term. NVIDIA, according to Financial Times, is working to develop an AI chip that is focused on China. As you remember from last week, if I'm not mistaken, the U.S. again increased the, uh, the, the things that NVIDIA cannot export to China. And NVIDIA is trying to overcome that by reprogramming the chips to be able to be imported into China or exported to China. And talking about China, Tesla just increased their price, their car prices in China between 250 and 344 US dollars. And maybe that's the end of the price uh, drops. We'll see in the few weeks. And FDA gives Eli Lilly an approval from terzepidine, terzepidine which is a weight loss drug. This might push Munjaro, which is also an Eli Lilly drug that is competing with Ozampic, um, to have a real competition there. Grand Theft Auto is going to be released in the next few weeks, and Take Two Interactive saw their price share going up, their share price going up due to that headline. 
Amazon is also announcing that the healthcare benefit program for Prime members is going to cost $9. So maybe that will create a huge demand for One Medical, a company that Amazon acquired. We will see again in the next few months. And also talking about Amazon, Rivian, which we're going to talk about that company in a few minutes, informed that the Amazon vehicles that Rivian is producing can now be produced to other companies. There is no more uh, commercial uh, uh, stoppage between them, which is very good news to Rivian as well. Intel is in the lead to get billions of government funding. You remember why, we, why the government was downgraded? Because all the funding. But again, in, Intel investors are very excited to get billions of dollars to build new fab in the U.S., WeWork files for bankruptcy, delisted from the stock exchange, and that is a story for the ages, how you can go from, if I'm not mistaken, $46 billion to being worth almost nothing. OpenAI released the new ChatGPT, ChatGPT Plus Turbo, faster, stronger, better, almost a Steve Austin uh, if you don't know, Google it. A Steve Austin uh, episode. They're citing the ability for anyone to invent their own GPT, their own GPT agent, and produce more and more capabilities, faster and more knowledgeable. Citigroup is uh, advancing with their project Bora Bora. 10% of their headcount is supposed to be reduced, and City is trying to do everything possible to get the company f uh, fitter and the stock price to go up. The stock price is the same price it was 10 or 15 years ago. Elon Musk fighting ChatGPT introduced Grok AI. Grok AI is Elon Musk's XAI version of large language models and the ability to get answers. The training is being done on Twitter data or X data, which Elon Musk owns. And if you're an X premium, premium plus subscriber, you'll be able to use it as well. And also this week, Plug Power crashed 30% after in their earnings, they mentioned that there's they don't have enough money and there's not enough of demand for hydrogen cars. So if all those that said hydrogen is the next big thing, well, apparently it's not the next big thing. And we're going to end with Rivian, which this week went public two years ago and raised or by valuation of $66.5 billion. By the way, if you invested $10,000 in Rivian's IPO, you now have $1,900, meaning you lost almost 81% of your money. Great IPO for the, invest for the inventors, for the founders. Investors, not so much. And this... This brings us to this week. What are we going to see this week? First of all, the Bears need to take control. You saw that in the thumbnail. They have to. Mike Wilson says we are still in a bear market rally. No technical information is supports that. That doesn't mean that the market will keep going up. But there's no technical reason to keep saying that. Why is he saying that? And where he is true is the RSP versus the S&P, which I showed you earlier. Most of the companies are still in bear market. But at the end of the day, the market is the S&P 500 as it is right now. You like it, you don't like it. It doesn't really matter. That is the market. You can't fight the market. You can't shout at the market. It doesn't care about you and me. We talked about these lines. Tuesday, November 14th, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, CPI, going to be the biggest event this week. And we're also going to have earnings, and we are in the retail week. Retail week, we will hear from Home Depot, from Target, from Advanced Auto Parts. We're going to hear from Walmart and Macy's and Gap and Ross Stores and others. But we'll also have a few companies that are interesting from themselves as well, like Palo Alto and Cisco. And also we're going to hear from Fisker and Monday and Nice and more and more and more. All this is going to bring us to saying thank you. Thank you for everyone who stood by Israel in these difficult times. Uh, remember that if you're supporting the other side, it usually means that you're on the wrong side of history. I'm Micah Stocks. 
Thank you for joining. If you can smash that like button, that would be awesome. And we will meet again next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.